Welcome back to Hashtag Self Care Summer. This has been a series about learning self care tips that has support from the Bible. Tips that we can implement this summer. We're on week ser- seven of the series, and honestly, I am so tired of sharing with you what we've learned in the past week. You should have been following it by now, but go back and watch all, everything in the playlist because those have been quality. Today, we're going to learn about the art of practicing gratitude. One passage we're going to look at today. So let's dive into it. It's Matthew 6. We will read verses 25 to 27. So I tell you, don't worry about the food you need to live. And don't worry about the clothes you need for your body. Life is more important than food, and the body is more important than clothes. Look at the birds in the air. They don't plant or harvest or store foods in barns. But your father feeds the birds, and you know that you are worth much more than the birds. You cannot add any time to your life by worrying about it. So before we, before I dive into this, I want to talk about what gratitude is. Define the term. Uh, the Oxford Dictionary had two definitions, and I think both are fitting. So let's go over both of them. The first definition is that gratitude is the quality of being thankful. Gratitude is the quality of being thankful. The second definition, gratitude is the readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. Gratitude is the readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. Gratitude is being appreciative of what's been given to you. Gratitude is expressing the thankfulness towards others for what they have done for you. And it also incorporates the mentality of showing the same thankfulness and kindness towards others. It made me think of the pay it forward movement. So, but I want to go back to the scripture and really look at the verses specifically. Now, verse 25 talks about how we shouldn't worry about food or clothes. Life is more than that. And I have often have talked about this verse as a way to kind of discuss extravagance versus necessities. You know, because we do put a lot of stress on, you know, if we're going to eat, what restaurant are we going to eat? Or if we're going to buy clothes, what brand am I going to get? You know, what's going to be the most stylish thing? We stress ourselves out about that. And then we stress ourselves with the after effect. Oh gosh, I shouldn't have ate that. And oh gosh, my bank account's gonna suffer. You know, and have you stopped and actually thought about how much of a blessing it is to have this kind of worry? When you stop and realize how much worrying we do about fast food restaurants and brand names, it can be kind of silly in hindsight. And I'm not gonna throw at you the, you know, well, some people have a worse argument because I know you know that. But I want you to look at the energy that we waste by spending so much time on these decisions. Yes, these are relatively simple decisions in hindsight. Imagine if we use the same kind of energy when we look at more important things like relationships, friendships, careers, colleges. We might be able to make more decisions and progress in our lives. And I believe because we spend too much time on the less important stuff, so therefore we lose the energy and the want to spend on the bigger adulting topics. And because we have so little energy left, we put those things aside and claim we'll deal with them later, even though we won't more than likely deal with them until the very last minute. But as the verse states, there are more important things to life than just deciding what to wear and what to eat. And this is where I think a gratitude practice can come in, and that is to be thankful that there's food in the fridge or clothes on your back. You know, for some people, and maybe even some of you watching, you may not be in those positions and i want to acknowledge you because i know it's very easy to hear this scripture and think you know you know yeah i can be thankful for that but i i'm not so therefore i can't be i i pray you're not hearing me in a way that's dismissing your reality because you should just be thankful for what you have that isn't that isn't at all where i'm coming from Now, I haven't experienced these struggles before, so I can't really talk from experience. But I have seen people and met people who have come to my church looking for help. And the gratitude they have when we can meet their needs is something that I can't put into words. Um, And I pray if you are struggling and are in need of stuff that you can reach out. And I pray that there's places in your areas that will graciously help you making sure your needs are met. But at the same time, I do pray that you can find gratitudes in in areas of your life. Um, I guess like one of the bigger things for me that I always do is, you know, finding gratitude that I took my first breath in the morning. 
um, even on those days where I didn't want to. And, you know, that God has blessed me with another day on earth. And that's, that's always been one I, I, I fall back to at the end of the day. And uh, there should be more. I, well, I mean, I feel like there should be more at least. But don't let this verse, like, um, detract from it. Because these are just two examples of the many areas that um, gratitude can be found in your life. We see the example of that Jesus gives in verse 26. He talks about how the birds don't stress over what we stress about. They don't stress because God constantly provides for them. And Jesus reminds us that God loves us more than those birds, therefore why should we worry? And again, at face value, this is still negate. I believe this still negates those who are in current struggles. This still minimizes those who are struggling, and especially struggling, especially struggling in these areas that are outside of their own control. And I still want to acknowledge you and, you know, tailor back to what I said earlier. So I hope you, there are, will be areas in your life where you find that gratitude. These struggles, again, that I talk about are just unique to the scriptures. The focus on what this story, I believe, though, comes in verse 27. So let me re-say that. You cannot add any time to your life by worrying about it. You can't add time to your life by worrying. Now let me flip that. You are taking away time from your life by worrying. Now that changes it. It's big. We worry about it a lot. I am a chronic worrier who needs to be checked into Worrier's Anonymous. But in all seriousness, though, I do worry about it a lot. Both things that are in and outside of my control. And ironically, I would teach you a series that I wrote back in May of 2020 that talked about releasing control. And that was actually going to be the summer series before I um, got this request. So, if you still like to hear it, let me know. But the skate guy said something about worry, and I have loved it ever since. Worry is like a rocking chair. It gives us something to do, but it doesn't get us anywhere. And I believe that's powerful. This is an excellent example of what worrying is like. So how can we change this? How can we change our perspective on worrying? And that's where I believe gratitude comes in. But before we get into that, I want to share this. Anxiety is a real thing. Anxiety causes us to whether whether we worry whether we choose to do it or not. And it can come from a chemical imbalance that's entirely outside of somebody's control. Anything I say is, again, not a cure-all, not an instant fix, nothing like that. I share what has helped me at some points in my life, and I also talk, try to talk about what hasn't helped. Anxiety can be situational or it can be constant. Some people need medication to help them. Some people need therapy. Some people take vitamins and supplements. I've done all three to help manage mine. And it's not wrong or it's not unbiblical to need these things. I believe God has provided these things for us at the same time. And yes, some people abuse it. And that's what creates a stigma around it. But that doesn't diminish the impact it can have. In scripture, God, religion, that can also help people with anxiety. Sometimes it doesn't, and it doesn't make you less of a Christian if, you know, if praying doesn't work for you. I share these ways to help you remember that you are not alone in your battle. God and a great community of believers can, can and should be walking with you in your journey when you deal with whatever you're dealing with. Gratitude is a way to put into perspective a situation happening at any given moment. The worry is what happens at the moment. Gratitude can happen is what can happen after the moment has passed. A decision that you make that provides a positive reaction is something you can express gratitude over after that decision happens. A decision that you make that provides an adverse reaction is something that you can express gratitude over as well. How? It depends on what you focus on. Think back to what I said in week two when we talked about being okay with failure. When I mention that failure happens at the moment, but you don't have to stay there. You don't have to stay in the results of the adverse decision. You don't have to punish yourself that way. You can step back, acknowledge that, yep, I made the wrong decision. It wasn't what I needed right now. And move forward and learn from that. It is then, I believe, that you find that gratitude. You're thankful that you're not staying in the moment of punishment and hardship. You're thankful that you have learned something to better yourself for next time. You've learned that for yourself, and actually now you have learned how to share that with others. And I believe this is what gratitude is all about. 
So let's talk to our gracious God who shares in this thankfulness. Thankful and Holy One, we want to thank you for how gracious you are with us. We thank you that you shared with us how to not stay in those wor moments of worry. We thank you that you shared with us that we don't have to dwell in those moments as a way to punish for ourselves. And Lord, I pray that everyone listening learns how gratitude can work in their lives. And I pray that they learn how to find those moments of gratitude wherever it shines for them. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. So that is it. I will be back next week to continue our hashtag self-care summer. Hopefully you've been using some of these tools. I think these tools have been really great. And I am so thankful that um, I had this request to do this series because it has been powerful just for me reading or writing this. So um, I will be back next week and we'll continue our discussion on how to have a hashtag self-care summer. Till then, stay blessed. Let's continue. The second line.